Hi there. Have you ever wondered if you're any good as a negotiator? Have you wondered if you, if you, you know, meet the standard, if, uh, if you're up to the task when you're sitting across from, from others who negotiate with you, specifically within a business context? Well, it's interesting. This is something that uh, I've often encountered as I've gone around the world um, working with groups in different industries, is that people are uh, not, not really confident in their ability as a negotiator because they don't understand what the benchmark is for a good negotiator. You see, it's, um, it's very interesting to me that you know, the original Latin word that was used to define negotiation, um, negotiatus, really meant that negotiation is anything that's not leisure. <clears throat> so the minute you engage in a business activity, that's seen as negotiation. And the modern day understanding of negotiation that people have is that it's something that only happens when the you know, contract or a price is being discussed or to resolve conflict. When you look at the way that most people define negotiation, and I'm talking about some of the finest academic institutions out there, they define it as a means of resolving some kind of conflict. Um, you know, so people often think of negotiation as something at the United Nations or peace negotiations, etc. But that's not the intent um, behind the original definition of the word at all. It simply means to do business, right? Now, if, if you have in your mind that negotiation is only about conflict resolution or, or, or finding a way to resolve conflict between two parties, guess what you're going to get more of? Whatever you focus on in life is what you're going to get more of. So if you, if you see <coughs> negotiation as a means to resolve conflict, probably you're going to have a lot of conflict dominating that kind of exchange. Far simpler to see negotiation as, as just a means of doing business, right? And what I've done over the last 15 years is I've made it my business to understand what elite level performance looks like when it comes to negotiation. I've looked at the areas of, of sports, of politics, of arts, <clears throat> and of business, of course. And there are five unifying characteristics when we look at elite level performers in, in, in those areas. And these apply equally to negotiators, right? So number one, if you're going to be a great negotiator, uh, you're going to have to be teachable. It's interesting to me that we look at you know, everybody who's at the top of their game. They're the ones that are surrounded by the coaches, by the advisors, um, by the teachers, as it were. They understand that you know, the difference between winning and losing is often very small, and they're really invested in, in, in taking the, the counsel, the advice of others. Right? So they're not afraid to submit themselves to correction. They're not afraid to um, submit themselves to evaluation and assessment because they're always on a, uh, on a mission to improve their, their results. The same is true in the context of negotiation. Right, number two is that those who are successful, they have courage. Would you agree that if you want exceptional results, it's not going to be enough or adequate for you to do average things? You're going to have to do some things that seem pretty counterintuitive. Now, what happens when you start doing counterintuitive things? If you do things that are out of the norm or that average people don't do, what's going to happen is you're going to meet resistance. It's inevitable that you're going to meet resistance. You know why? Because you're stepping outside of the mold. So it's going to take courage from your perspective to break through. You're going to be doing things in the context of your negotiations that other people will look at and say, well, uh, why are you doing that? It doesn't make sense at all. Uh, this is where it's going to take your courage. You're going to have to move outside of the mold. You look at in my opinion, the greatest negotiator ever um, in recorded history, Nelson Mandela, some of the things that he did were completely counterintuitive. Uh, as a matter of fact, some of his most challenging negotiations were internally within you know, uh, his support base because they, they, they couldn't understand why he was doing the things that he was doing. So if you want to be a great negotiator, you, you're going to have to have courage to break through the mold. The third thing is you're going to have to bring consistency to the way that you negotiate. And, and the way that you do that is by focusing on the, on the way that you prepare, by bringing structure to your preparations, right? It's been said that it's impossible for you to improve your outcomes if um, you're not prepared to measure or you're not capable of measuring what you're doing. So without measuring something, how will you know that you're getting better at it? In the context of negotiation, the way that we do that is by bringing structure to the way that we prepare. So making sure that there's a, um, a similar or a standardized way that you approach your negotiations, and then you can evaluate the outcomes of those negotiations against the framework that you have for, for preparation. So it's daily consistency. You know, success is never achieved in one big bang. It's always built upon you know, um, the previous step. It's always iterative. So you've got to bring that consistency 
to the way that you negotiate. The fourth unifying characteristic of successful negotiators is ambition, right? So uh, there is no success without wanting more success, or, or there is no achievement without wanting more achievement, right? So those who, who achieve great heights, who, who are really successful, they have heightened ambition, they want more, they're prepared to sacrifice more, they work harder, they're more demanding. The same thing is true in negotiation. If you want better results from your negotiations, you have to be more ambitious. You have to ask for the things that other people won't ask. You have to be prepared that people say no to you. <clears throat> By the way, not a bad thing. People say no to you in the context of negotiation. There's a great opportunity that you have. Um, more about that and maybe some of um, my different content videos. But uh, without ambition, it's going to be very hard for you to push through the ceilings to, take, to, to, to reach that next level of, of elite performance. And then the final unifying characteristic, the, uh, characteristic, the fifth one, that's um, shared amongst top-level, elite-level performers, specifically in the context of negotiation, is that they have fun. You can hardly uh, picture a professional athlete, let's say, that spent a whole lifetime preparing for the Olympic Games, um, waking up the morning of the Olympic Games going, wow, oh, I can't believe it. Here I have to go compete again. You know, it's the moment that they live for. Uh, mastery is reflected through fun, through making that which is very hard, complex and challenging looking uh, like it's fun. So if you want to be great at negotiating, one of the things that you're going to understand that will underpin your mastery of that concept is that it's fun to you. If it feels like it's a labor, if it feels like it's really hard, probably you're not performing at an elite level. So. Compare the way that you approach the negotiation to, uh, or, or the way that you feel when you negotiate, the way that you think about negotiation to those five characteristics that I've um, identified for you, and that'll help you to understand how good a negotiator you are. I hope that I've challenged you, and please accept my best wishes for your continued success.